vector called V. So we're thinking of a matrix now as not being an object so much as it is a process, almost. Instead of being a noun, we're going to think today of a matrix as being more of a verb. We're going to matrix the vector x and thereby turn it into the vector b. And so the picture here is the kind of picture that we usually think of when we think of what functions do. Functions have a domain, which has a set of inputs that we can plug into them. And then they also have a, a range, which is a set of all the outputs that we get out of that function. So we're going to think of our domain here on the left-hand side of this picture as being where all of our x's live, the x vectors, and that to take an x vector and turn it into a vector over here on the right, which, by the way, instead of calling it the range, because we're going to use range for something slightly different, uh, we're going to call this space on the right the codomain. And the vectors over here, we might call, suggestively, we might call them b's. And the role of a matrix, when we think of a matrix as being a verb, is to transform x's into b's. So A, the matrix A, is something that happens along the way from the domain to the codomain. So it associates with every vector on the left side, some vector on the right side. And it associates it just by multiplying that vector by the matrix. So in this first example, which is the default example that gets loaded up when you start up this app, um, I've got the vector x on the left side being 1, 0. And the matrix is just this matrix right here that has as its columns 1, 0, and 0, 1. So let's check that when I multiply the vector x on the left by the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, that I get what I think I get here. So, using our linear combination formalism, this is 1 times the first column of that matrix plus 0 times the second column and so sure enough what we get on the right hand side is 1, 0 and that's what we're going to call our B here those vectors are kind of small in the picture but you can see them there right there sitting on the x-axis so describe to me in sort of verbiage, verb language, what has A done to X? What did this A do to this X? It took one zero on the left side and it turned it into one zero on the right side. So what did it do to X? Or maybe what is the relationship between x in the domain and b in the codomain? They're the same vector, right? x and b are, are exactly the same. They're identical. What did a do to x? Nothing. And so now we might ask the question, well, OK, a did nothing to the vector x, 1, 0. What might A do to other vectors in the codomain? And so we might be interested in not just plugging in a single vector x into this equation and seeing what happens, but plugging a bunch of different vectors x into this equation and seeing what happens, seeing what relationship exists between the x on the left and the b on the right. We can do that just by adjusting the input vector using this little slidey thing. So if my input vector is, I don't know, 2, 2, on the left, then multiply that by the matrix A, and I get the output vector on the right is also 2, 2. So what did A do to this X? Nothing. Nothing. And no matter where, actually, we slide this input vector around in the domain, it's image in the codomain. And when I say image, what I mean is um, the vector in the codomain which results from multiplying X. So x is over here, I might call this x the input to my function. 
and then I'm thinking of my matrix as being like a function, which is a little machine here. And we put x into this machine, and out of this machine comes a vector b, which we get by multiplying x by the matrix A, and I'm going to call this vector the image of x. So when I use the word image, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so if x is 1 and negative 3 in the domain, then the image of that x is 1, negative 3 in the codomain. So what did A do to this input? Also nothing. So by the way, there is a reason that we gave this matrix the name that we gave it in yesterday's class. What name did we give the matrix that looks like this? The identity matrix. Because when we apply that matrix to a vector, what changes? Nothing. The identity matrix um, does not change vectors that it multiplies. It does not change x. In other words, if I take an identity matrix and I multiply it by any vector at all, the result is equal to that same vector. Is that clear that if x is 1, negative 3, then the product of that matrix by 1, negative 3 is again 1, negative 3. So thinking in terms of algebraic structures, this matrix is what we might call the multiplicative identity. It's like the number 1, right? When we multiply by it, nothing changes. So the identity matrix in linear algebra is just the generalization of what the number 1 does to real numbers, the identity matrix does to vectors. It doesn't change anything that it multiplies by. And that's the purpose of the identity matrix within the realm of linear algebra. And this app kind of gives us the visual picture for why that is. That no matter what purple vector I choose in the domain, its image, the green vector on the right, is exactly the same as the original was. and think about what this might look like in its matrix format. Actually, why don't we just go back and, and rehash the system that we already looked at today. Um, and then it was, was it 1, negative 2, or 2, negative 1? No, I don't remember. I think it was this, right? Mm -hmm. And the right-hand side was 10, 7. Actually, I'm going to choose a different right-hand side because my axes aren't big enough here for the vector 10, 7. Um, so let's choose, um, so same system of equations as we had uh, a minute ago, just with a different right-hand side. So if I were to reformulate this as a matrix equation, what would it look like? What would my matrix be? And then what is my input vector, and then what is my image vector? So what does this look like as a matrix equation? What is, uh, well, what's my matrix here? Four, negative one, two. Right. Again, it's just those coefficients. 4, negative 1, 1, 2. Okay. Um, and on what vector is that matrix acting? What's the purple vector here? X and Y. Again, one of the major triumphs of using the matrix formalism is that now we're thinking of solving this equation for a single entity. We're not thinking of x and y as being separate, kind of. We're thinking of them as being part of a single object, the vector x, y, okay, that we're going to try to solve for. And the right-hand side vector, our b, is 5, negative 1. So our goal now is to solve this linear system. Solve it. Four, and again, we can think of it as a linear system, but really, we're thinking of it as a single equation. And I'm going to solve it for this vector, x, y, which we're going to call the vector x. There's the plan. 
So now let's implement that plan. And to do that, I'm going to set up this app to have the matrix 4, negative 1, 1, 2 in it. Um, and then we should put the vector 5, negative 1 somewhere. Where does that vector 5, negative 1 belong on this particular diagram? It belongs in the codomain, exactly. So these b's, the b's of ax equals b, belong to the codomain. So 5, negative 1 is a vector over here. 5, negative 1. And then my matrix in the middle is going to be our matrix A. So just for a minute, I'm going to write this in by hand. 4, negative 1, 1, 2. That's the matrix, that's the verb that's describing what's happening to purple things, to turn them into green things. And then when we find our solution x, it's going to be a vector where? Back here in the domain. But the problem is, we don't know which one. So what we're looking for is a vector in the domain whose image, when we multiply it by this matrix, hits exactly the vector 5, negative 1 in the codomain. So there's the picture. When we're solving for x, we're finding a vector back here whose image is 5, negative 1. So let's get right down to it and figure out how it works. So first I'm going to dial in our matrix. Uh, 4, negative 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, there we go. And we'll dial in our image vector. So I'm going to just tweak this green thing to be 5, negative 1. Oh, and the applet is nice enough to do our solution for us. So based on the results of tweaking this applet in this way, the equation, the matrix equation, 4, negative 1, 1, 2, multiplied by some vector x, y, equals 5, negative 1, has the solution one negative one. In other words, our original system of linear equations, four x minus y equals five, and x plus two y equals negative 1, that this original system of equations had solution x equals 1, and y equals negative 1, yeah. In other words, by solving for this single purple vector, we have found in its coordinates the solutions for the two variables, x and y, 1 and negative 1. So again, Thinking of it in the matrix formalism allows us to think of it as one equation rather than two, and our solution is one entity, a vector, rather than two separate entities, an x and a y. Right? But either way, all roads lead to Rome. Right? We get to the same answer, uh, whichever way we look at this. But the matrix formalism is a little more sophisticated, and it allows us to think about this in, in a new and a fresh way. And we should check that when we carry out that matrix multiplication, that we actually do get what we expect to get. 4, 1, negative 1, 2. So here I'm going to get 1 of the first column minus 1 of the second column. That's 4 minus negative 1. That's 5. And it's 1 minus 2. And that's negative 1. So it works. Well, Question? Well, we didn't have the back when we didn't tell you it was 1, negative 1. So as you do, like, 4x, x minus... Uh, yeah, so if we didn't know, so now if we want to actually solve this equation without the, you know, some technology doing it for us or whatever, we would be back to the question of how do we solve a linear system of equations. We would set up an augmented matrix and apply row operations. Or we could use substitution, or we could use elimination. So all of those tools, or we could graph these two lines and figure out what their intersection point is. All of those tools that we have, we could use to solve this equation. So the purpose of this applet is not so much to give us a new method to solve, but rather to give us a new way to understand what 
that solution can be thought of as a vector. Okay? But in order to actually solve this linear system, we more than likely would, since we are now getting well practiced at row reduction, we would just set this up as an augmented matrix, 4, negative 1, 5, 1, 2, negative 1. And then we would just choose some elementary row operations uh, to make this work. Maybe I'll swap the two rows so I have a 1 in my pivot position. And then subtract four times the first row from the second row to clear out the entry underneath that pivot position. Negative 1 minus 4 times 2 is negative 7. And 5 minus 4 times negative 1. Um, did I screw something up already? <laughs> 1, 2, negative 1. Uh, oh, negative 1 minus 4 times 2. That's what I screwed up. Negative 8. Um, and then uh, 5 minus 4 times negative 1. I still screwed something up, didn't I? That would be... So this is negative 9, right? And then that's 9. And then dividing that second row by negative 9 gives me that. And now my matrix is in row echelon form. And to bring it into reduced row echelon form, now I just want to make it so that every pivot is by itself in its own column. I can do that by subtracting twice the second row from the first row. That will clear out this entry and make it a 0. And then this last entry here would be um, negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1. It gives me positive 1. And when we translate that back into our uh, equations, we get x equals 1 and y equals minus 1. So we haven't really yet, at least, come up with a new method of solution of this linear system of equations. We've just come up with a different way of thinking about what that system of linear equations can look like. If we're thinking of our both our input and our image as being vectors, and the coefficients of this linear system become a matrix that operates on those vectors. But the tools are still the same. So row operations, unfortunately, aren't going away <laughs> anytime soon.